So I wanted to expand just a little bit more on the different types of stage blood and just kind of like fake blood in general that you might run into if you're working in theater or film and TV or just freelancing makeup, doing whatever it is you might be doing. Um, so one of the first things you kind of have to figure out is like what texture of blood um, you might be interested in, what you might be looking for. So you have to figure out like, is this a blood that needs to drip a lot? Does it need to stay in one place? Does it need to be shiny? Should it be dried blood? Is it crusty? Um, is it going to be flowing the whole time? Do I have to, you know, you really have to think about like what the texture of blood is because that's going to kind of like dict like dictate like the type of blood um, that you buy and then you also have to think about like what are the lighting conditions going to be because if it's going to be super super dark then you might have to use um, a lighter blood than what you might think um, so that's something you have to think about so you got to think about the texture that you need you need to think about the lighting situation that it's in um, you kind of have to think about like the removal and the application process I think um, particularly if you're doing something that's in theater, you know, if it's like film and TV, usually you're given plenty of time, um, plenty of time to like stop and do things if you have to and like take things off. But in theater, often like you might be doing an injury and like a quick change because like somebody gets punched in the face and then they go off stage and like they need a bloody nose when they come back in 10 seconds. Um, so it's kind of things like that you really have to think about because that's also going to kind of dictate like what products you're using because if you use this really amazing blood and it looks super realistic but you have five seconds to take it off someone and it stains really badly that's not going to work so you kind of have to really like analyze the situation um that your injury specifically for blood um in this video and in this case um what situation you're going to be in just so that you are covering um kind of all all of the things that you need to cover with it and you're not creating any new problems for yourself um and then probably one of the like last things that you really need to think about as well would be like does it need to come out of whatever it's going to be on so chances are if you are putting fake blood on someone unless it is something that's going to be like dried in one place um it's going to get on something else so if it is going to be a nosebleed, you have to make sure, like, is it going to stay in their skin? Is it going to stay in their clothes? Is it going to stay in the furniture, the set, the floor, whatever it is? Because there are some bloods, and, like, I do have one, um, that it just doesn't really come out of anything. Like, if it hits a surface, it might not come off your floor. It might not come out of your clothes. It stains the skin really badly. So you really have to, like, make sure you're researching these things um, and know what it is like what situation you're setting yourself up for essentially um, when you are picking out these bloods. And then one last thing that I forgot to mention that's really, really important is you also have to think about where is this blood going to go. So if you are doing an effect that is um, in or around the mouth or it's like in or around the nose, it needs to be an internal blood because even if they are not swallowing it, if even if it's not going up their nose, if it's just around these areas, if there is any chance that it could be ingested, it has to be internal blood. It has to be mouth safe. It has to be something that if they eat it, they are not going to get sick. So please, please, please make sure of that. I think a lot of times around the nose, um, we don't think about those things. So please, please, please make sure you are being safe, um, whatever blood that you're using. If you need an eye blood effect, um, as far as I know, Krylon is the only company that makes eye blood. Um, please be safe with that. It, if you own it, um, or if you're thinking about getting it, just know that once it's open, um, it's got a like month shelf life, basically, like you've got 30 days to use it. So it's just like any kind of eye drops you would have. It's not something that you're going to have around for five years. Um, like most products and makeup things that we have, but sometimes you can push it a little bit and maybe it's not so bad. Um, please don't do that with eye blood or really anything that's going to go in your eyes just because you don't know you know, like what's brewing inside of that container once you open it and you've exposed it to air and what if the dropper touches your face and then that puts bacteria back in there. So please be careful with that kind of stuff. Um, but do know that if you do need like an eye blood effect or you need someone's eyes to look like discolored in any way, Krylon has a range of colors. Um, they've got, it's red, black, blue, yellow, and green. Um, that's going to temporarily stain the whites of the eyes for about like 15, 20 minutes and then you cry that color out. So it's a really great effect. It's not a permanent effect. Um, if you are wearing contacts, you are not supposed to use it otherwise just know your contacts will be stained um it is safe to use um on kids that has been something and that's a question that i had to field when i was at Krylon. um as long as you know that if it is not your own personal bottle um you need to be using different droppers on people if, it, if it's your bottle that you only use on yourself cool put that dropper directly on onto you that's fine but if you have one bottle that you have to use for a whole cast of people if they don't have their own containers you have to have your own dropper um you cannot use the same dropper on multiple people so please be careful with that product always be careful around anything with the eyes it's an amazing product um 
but just be really careful with it. And I think it has been getting more popular over the years, so I just always try to tell people uh, as much information as I can about it since I did um, work around it for so long while I worked at Krylon. So be careful about that. Um, otherwise, if you just have blood that's going on like the surface of the skin and it's not going in, or no um, in the nose or in the mouth or like in or around the eyes, then that's going to be an external blood and that's what the majority of bloods um, that you're going to run into and that are going to be out on the market are. So that's a little bit less like scary just because you have so many more choices with that. But um, always just make sure whatever you're putting on somebody it's the right thing for what you're doing. Um, test allergies. I have a lot of dye allergies, so I'm someone like that's why I've never used the eye blood because I've had really bad dye reactions before. Um, so always kind of watch out for stuff like that. Always check your ingredients. Just because it's like kind of like an oddball product doesn't mean that it could have something in it that somebody who is very allergic to a lot of things um, might be allergic to. So always test things, you know, put a little bit on their wrist, back of the ear, just a small section of skin before you like cover somebody in something. Um, that's my really big long intro on blood. Um, but pretty much, so as far as like your blood effects go, so if you wanted to, um, you could do something as simple as like using a cream makeup. If it's just like a really quick like blood effect, then they're gonna wipe it back off. That'll come off really easily on stage. You can use um, like aqua color or like paradise paint, so like water activated paints um, and paint on little cuts and blood effects if you want to. That can stain a little bit more than just like a quick cream makeup would, but again, both of those are gonna be like very skin friendly um, and gentle really a pretty easy removal. Um, if you do just want to use a cream, one of my favorite colors um, is Lake from Krylon. It is a cream color. Um, I always use it in my little like burn and injury wheel that I have. So it's like this deep um, burgundy color. I really love this color. It's great for beauty and kind of like injury makeup. So if you wanted, um, and this is just like a little coarse stipple sponge. When I'm doing injuries, I think that the coarse stipple sponge is a little bit better than the fine one because I think it looks a little bit more like a scrape. Um, but if somebody just needed, and again, this is going to smear everywhere if you can't set it, but if they are supposed to like get in a fist fight on stage and then come back and be on for like 10 seconds and like, oh, look at all these scrapes they have, this is a quick, easy way to do it um, that doesn't involve like drippy blood. Because sometimes when you're backstage, you don't have somewhere to like put a bunch of blood to put on someone, but like having a little bit of like cream makeup ready um, might be a little bit easier or more realistic. So you could just take something like this um, and you could just kind of like scrape it and that's gonna help it look um, a little bit like scratches and blood. So I really like this burgundy color because I feel like it just like reads as injury makeup um, and like reads as like an injury, but you could go brighter red if you needed to. Again, a lot of that's gonna depend on your lighting. Um, I have like a ring light on me right now, so this is a little bit more of like an ideal lighting situation. I feel like a lot of times with scenes with injuries, if you're not like in a hospital scene or something, it might be very dark, so you might have to push it brighter. But really like any cream color, you just kinda press it down on the skin um, and it's gonna give you these little scrape marks and something like that, especially for theater, that's gonna get your point across that somebody is injured. Um, it might not be like the most realistic thing in the world if somebody is super up close, but one thing I do like about using a stipple sponge and cream, which you can kind of see, is that it gives you like nice texture that kind of gives you like a chunkier kind of like a blood um, effect if that is what you're after. So that's a really quick way to do it. Um, most people in theater I feel like are pretty familiar um, with stipple sponges if you do any kind of makeup, so that's an easy way to do it. Um, if you're looking for a blood, we'll start with these because um, I don't personally have anything to use to demo right now, um, but if you have to do something that is like going to be ingested, so whether it's in or around the mouth, um, or they're eating and drinking it, whatever they're doing, if they're drinking it, you're probably mixing up like a food or something and it's not like a whole thing of blood, um, or if it's going like in or up the nose, um, a really popular one is going to be Ben Nye's Stage Blood. Um, that's one that's going to come in most people's like actor kits because um, a lot of schools are still using the Ben Nye kits. So that one, it's like zesty mint flavor. That's safe if somebody puts it in their mouth. Um, blood capsules. So you can make your own blood capsules. Um, some places sell like empty ones and then you can put your own blood in there. Um, a lot of theaters end up making their own blood. So the a lot of the times I've worked in shows with blood, um, props has handled it and they've made it. And then like, depending on where it goes on a person, we might apply it. So like one show I worked on, um, we were putting like injecting the blood into somebody's mouth, um, with like a little like plastic, like medicine syringe. Um, but props, they're actually the ones who prepared it for us. So it's just kind of like, depends on the theater that you're at and the situation that you're in. Um, otherwise I worked on another show, um, where wardrobe, cause they didn't have like a separate wig and makeup department. So we were wardrobe, we handled all the blood. Um, 
and we like bought a blood for that but we had to do everything with like blood rigs and things so it, it really just kind of depends on the theater that you're at um but also know that that just because you do wigs and makeup or you're working on a show as like the effects makeup artist or something sometimes blood can fall into a completely different department um it just kind of depends on like is it touching a person or like touching a prop a lot of the time so kind of keep that in mind um but back to like internal bloods and things so yeah so there's like bed nice stage blood um a lot of places just call it like mouth blood um krylon has like capsules that are like powder they're kind of like a foaming red they're not like a super liquidy one um there's a lot of different brands with like internal blood but i think a lot of the times shows just make their own. It's a lot more cost effective to make your own blood. Um, I have not personally made my own blood. I usually, I worked for Krylon for a long time, so I have pretty much lots of what I have and that's what I use for things. Or I've just worked on shows where props always handled it. But um, I know one place I worked on, some of the blood was made, obviously not what we're ingesting, but some of the blood was made with laundry detergent so we could wash it out of the clothes. The blood that was getting ingested, they would make that fresh before every single show um, using like food ingredients. So it just kind of depends on like, what you're doing so you might run into that or you might end up looking up recipes and stuff for things a lot of people use like chocolate syrup and like food coloring that's like an easy old school way to do it um i think that's like yeah like that i don't know like i said i'm not like a huge pro on like making my own blood or anything but you might run into that um but my best thing to suggest to you if you do have anything where there's like internal blood and it's going in the mouth sometimes i think people think it's funny or it's scarier if they like pop a ton of blood capsules or try to like drink a ton of it um you will probably puke if you do that so um it's really it's not worth it and it's not funny if you think it's going to be like a weirder more dramatic effect um a lot of times if you pop a ton of blood capsules you might just like get sick from it so just be really careful with that kind of stuff um it might seem like a good idea but don't push it because you're still putting something like a lot of them are like super super sugary like I know that Krylon used to make one that was just it was so sugary um so if you're taking in a bunch of that it's just not good so just be careful with that um don't overdo it make sure if you are buying it from somewhere and you're not making it yourself if you're making it yourself make sure it's properly refrigerated you're keeping it a good temperature if you have to keep it like that um if you're buying it from somewhere make sure you know when you bought it like write the date on it because you don't want to give someone a blood that is bad because it's just like food, right? Like if I leave food for two years and then I try to eat it, I'm going to get very sick. So your internal blood um, could be the same. And same if it's going up the nose, please make sure it is not expired. Most of those bloods are going to have a shorter shelf life um, than some of your other bloods might. Um, so that's talking about like cream and like water activated blood, essentially like water activated paint blood, um, internal blood. So otherwise your next stuff's going to be kind of like texture. So if you need a blood that's like super super drippy um that might be something where like if it's going into like a blood pump and it's like a blood gag or something or if somebody is like like I worked on a show where like people would get shot on stage so you know we'd be pressing a button backstage and their blood packs were like battery operated or like it was a sensor I didn't make them but I was working wardrobe on it and so that would need to be like a very liquidy blood because it would have to explode um and be visible under their clothes so that's a time when you might need like a liquid blood um we were using the brand real blood for that r-e-e-l um that was a really great brand for that it washed out of the clothes we had to make sure we got to it right away to wash it out but that worked great for us um for a couple months that we used it for a show so we really liked that but generally if it's going into like a blood rig or something it's going to have to be pretty liquidy otherwise it's not going to move um through the tubing so kind of keep that in mind if you have something that's going to get applied like directly to the skin and it's going to be on stage you probably don't want it to be super drippy because the actor might not be able to control it very easily so sometimes with theater um you can't do the like really gory effects that you might do for like film and TV because we just don't have the same aspect of control in theater that film and TV does. Like if something is out of place, they can cut and fix it. But when you are running a live show, if somebody is like, when the one show I worked on with the like people getting shot and having the blood, um, the little like blood bags, they would pop sometimes when they weren't supposed to. So weird things are gonna happen like that. You just kinda have to go with it in theater. So that's why you don't necessarily, you know, you're gonna have shows where somebody might have to be like completely drenched in blood. Um, but typically I feel like you are working with like a more controlled kind of an injury situation than you might be with like film and TV. Um, so one of my favorite bloods to use if it's something that um, it needs to look like it's still like wet, but it's actually gonna be something that dries down, um, would be Krylon's effects blood. So they make it in a dark and a light 
the light is a very very bright red so if you're in a really like low light situation that can be great for that I know there was um, one show in, in Chicago um, that's where I work and live but there was one show in Chicago that um, they actually had to mix like a UV red into the blood just because it still wasn't bright enough even at its lightest so that's something else you might have to do so it might look really strange to your eye but you have to think about when we're on stage and we're doing theater it's a completely different situation than like what we're in right now if it's like film or something or people are really up close if you're on a big stage it's super dark it's got to show up so it might look as bright as my nails to like the naked eye but once it's on stage um it'll look as it's supposed to look um so i really love the effects blood for that so um i think this blood is in particular is better for like drips of blood because i don't think um when it like spreads out that it looks super realistic so I think if it's like kind of like really beaded up in like one place it's not bad but again for theater a lot of times the things that we're doing um it's theatrical it's supposed to be like big so that you see it in like the bigger space and like brighter lighting than you're going to be in for film and tv but I would say whenever I spread this out I feel like I'm not like the happiest with how it looks um but it's a good thing for like little blood drips or you can take like the stipple sponge on it scratch up somebody's face um and that's gonna dry down like I've only had this on for like 30 seconds and it's already pretty much dry so the more you put the more like shine you're gonna have to it I'll use this for burn makeups a lot actually like the really light color um to kind of like make the burn look like wet still so that's a really great blood um it stains the skin a little bit I will say that it's as you're gonna see like kind of on my hands but there are bloods that stain far more but this is a really good like user-friendly blood it's another great one for like Halloween um, if you need to put a little bit of blood on someone whose makeup you're doing and you want it to stay on this is a great one to use so I really love it not super expensive um, I can't I don't know what the band was but there was some band that um, would come to the like Krylon in Chicago and they would buy like the biggest size that we had of this like I want to say it was probably like 32 ounces of blood and I guess they would like use it on stage around like Halloween time every year so it's it's a pretty popular blood it's pretty cool um otherwise another really great texture of blood um if you want something that doesn't necessarily have to dry but it needs to stay in place and still look kind of wet um would be a blood gel um so again everything I own is Krylon's so this is their HD blood gel um but I really love this stuff so it looks like it gives you one I love the blood gel because I feel like it, it can be multiple things so if it's a liquid blood um and it's gonna dry down it's gonna dry like physically flat if it's a liquid blood and it's just running it's still gonna be kind of flat which sometimes when you're on stage you need something to have a little bit more texture um just so that it's like visible because you might be super far away um that's why I really love blood gel because I can have something that has more texture to it but if you need to like thin it out you can always like thin it too so um it just kind of depends on like the look that you're going for something that you could easily do with this um again would you be like give yourself like a quick like scrape with it or something and this will like kind of dry down there you go I think that's a little better yeah so this will dry a little bit um I don't trust it quite as much as like the effects blood or blood that says it dries but in my experience with this if you don't like cake it on super super thick like that's gonna take a second to dry um, but this would eventually um, dry down however if I was gonna have to have bloody palms for a show I would want something that definitely dried down but um, just to kind of show you blood gels are really awesome um, especially if you're like on a budget and you need blood to be like multiple things like you need something that's gonna be more liquidy um, but you also need something with texture blood gel is awesome for that so I really recommend that um, Krylon's not the only brand in the world that makes it but as far as texture goes that's a really great texture um other ones so you need something that's not necessarily like a liquid maybe it has to be like dried and crusty um there are crusty bloods that exist um a lot of really popular ones are going to be like scab bloods and like um things like that i don't think i have any scab blood i thought i did but i actually grabbed two of the same like wound filler one but basically a scab blood is one that's gonna go um on the skin so usually like they'll actually look kind of like this at first and then as they dry down they dry and they flake um 
those can be really great if you need like an older wound on somebody however I will say um, if you put it in an area where you have a lot of movement it can get kind of painful because as it dries it will kind of like like for example like I put it on my neck um, my first Halloween working at Krylon because I just like didn't know any better and every time I moved it was like every little tiny hair on your neck that you don't realize is there it was just like constricting it and it was so painful so just kind of think about like when you are using those bloods if it's in an area especially for stage if someone's like talking and singing and emoting um you don't want to put it anywhere where there's a lot of movement because it could get painful as it dries and that might make it flake off too much so again it could be great for like a quick little like scrape or something but um just be careful that you don't put it anywhere with too much movement but those bloods are really popular um Ben Nye's is called I think they're the ones where it's like fresh scab um at Krylon it's like fresh scratch so you're pretty much going to be something like that it's either like scab blood or like I think Ben Nye's is maybe just scab blood but basically those are bloods that are going to like kind of dry and flake and still have a lot of texture um another one that's not necessarily going to like dry down um but if you just need like a lot of texture um is going to be wound filler um so wound filler and this one is Krylon's in particular um but wound filler is really great because it's like this really thick blood that kind of looks like jam um and this is really good if one you have to like fill a wound so if you need to like fill something up um it's great for that because when you like spread it out um hold on you have to so you have to be really careful because this stuff if you don't like mush it down um it will just fall back off some people will actually put like spirit gum inside the wounds to make it stay um but this is a really awesome blood it's one of my favorite bloods that Krylon makes this is another good one if you just need to have like a quick um we'll see the white balance is so bad sometimes because I'm so pale um this is another good one that if you just have to have like a quick um like scrape or something um whenever I stop being too pale this will give you like great texture for it so even though I'm like a little bit further away um you can still see the really great texture this is another one where like it doesn't necessarily like dry down all the way but um like I would say like it gets a little bit like tacky um and it's not like going to be a perfect dry but um you have some really great texture with it so it's going to be in this area where my hand is a little chunkier um, than just like the gel blood. So I really love this. I will say though, especially if you ever get the Krylon one, they do come now with like these little foil seals. Um, I would seal it back up with plastic because these are really prone to drying out. Um, so just be really careful with that when you're working with it. Um, and again, just like all your beauty products, your bloods are gonna have expiration dates. Like this one is like, so I've got six months to use this now that I just opened it. Um, so always keep that in mind that just because they're not like traditional beauty products doesn't mean that they won't um have the same kind of like shelf life that your regular beauty ones would um the last one I want to talk about um is Krylon's powder blood I don't know if anyone else makes this but basically this is like a blood that goes on relatively colorless in a powder form it's a little bit gray so for deeper skin tones it might gray you out a little bit but basically you can put this onto the skin or even like onto a prop or something um and when it get, comes in contact with water or something wet it makes you bleed um I will say it's a very bright red a lot of time but for theater um, that could be perfect if it's darker um, what people will do is they'll usually put like a little of this on the skin and then if it's like you're getting cut with something it's whatever you're getting cut with that has like the water or some kind of like liquid activator on it um, and that's where the blood comes from so this stuff gets everywhere um, so if you are ever going to use it be really really careful um, I have stained my hands really badly with this before um, and it has a tendency to just kind of like explode everywhere um but basically and I did not pre-open it because I am a fool but um basically I'm trying to be really careful um what is gonna happen is so I'm trying to see I guess I'll put it on my my poor palm um I'm gonna put it on I don't even recommend when you're brushing this on to use a brush that you ever want to use again because the color in this this is the blood I was talking about that if it gets on like a surface it's not guaranteed it's gonna come back off so this could stain floors clothes um, it will stain the skin a lot um, but it's a really cool effect I think it's like hilarious um, but it's one of those things that just gets everywhere like if somebody used this um, in the store we would think that we cleaned it up and then all of a sudden we'd be cleaning another day and like the shelves would be bleeding <laughs> or something like that so um, always be really careful and make sure that it's cleaned up all the way um, but basically what happens is that 
when you hit it with water, um, you can see that worked pretty well. It will just start bleeding and your hand will be bleeding, um, which is kind of hard to tell because I am so pale, but I think you, it's not going to get any better because I'm not going to get any paler in two seconds, but I think you could see um, that that's where that like brighter blood and you could see the moment that it started dripping. Um, but it definitely is something that like will continue dripping. Um, so you want to try to catch that pretty quickly um, because it will really stain the skin. And again, I would use like a Q-tip or something disposable or like a sponge to put it on. Um, but it's a really cool effect. I think it's hilarious. Um, I think it would be fun to like prank people with, but be really careful. Like if you're going to put it on somebody's face, it could drip into the eyes really easily. So just kind of watch stuff like that and really make sure that you're like rehearsing it and making sure that it's safe. But um, there's a ton of different brands of blood. So Krylon makes a ton of blood. Ben Nye does. Um, Real Blood, R-E-E-L. That's a great one. Um, I want to say, I think like KD, KD151, I think is the, is the brand name. It's KD something. They make a ton of blood. I used to have some stuff from them. Um, I want to say the other brand that's really popular right now is called like Pigs Fly South. I think it is something like that. I have not used it, but I know that's really popular for a lot of theatrical brands um, and theatrical like companies to use. Otherwise, um, obviously there's lots of other people who make blood, but those are some of the like top ones. Um, you don't have to spend tons of money on it. Just make sure that you are buying the texture that you need, the type, so internal, external eye blood that you need, um, or and that you know like the person's not allergic to whatever you're getting um and that you know how easy it's going to be to remove from everything always test it on fabric um if it's going to come in contact with fabric or if you care um i know we had a haunted house here in chicago that would come and get um our aqua color and they would put that on clothes and then um they were able to wash that out and like reapply it as needed too so that's another option you can use aqua color um i haven't used other water activated paints i only know of people using um aqua color on clothing but um that's another way that you can kind of like distress some bloody clothing if you need to too. Um, that's really popular with um, a college that used to be a client of ours at the store in Chicago. Um, but pretty much, yeah, just always keep in mind um, the texture of blood you need, the type, the lighting situation, um, also how they got injured because you need to know like is it going to be gushing blood or is it just like a little scrape or something like this um, and then how much time you have to take it off so that way that kind of dictates um, what it is that you're going to use to take it off. So, and always number one, um, keep safety in mind just because it, a lot of stuff in affects blood. It's not so bad as long as you're not putting something in a place where it shouldn't be, but, um, always make sure that you're being safe. If a ton of blood gets on the floor, you need to clean that up so somebody doesn't slip on it. Um, always be as safe as possible, but, um, I think effects are super fun to use. I think more theaters are starting to use a lot of blood, but, um, just always be safe about it. Also, if there's going to be tons of injury makeup and blood in shows, not a bad idea to put something on the program about it just so that people who might be more sensitive to those things are aware of it um, before they go into the theater because you also don't want to unnecessarily freak someone out if you could warn them first. So hopefully um, that helps clarify some stuff about blood a little bit. Um, I'm covered in it now so you can see it's really important to get stuff that dries down. Otherwise, you move wrong and you will be covered in it. So hopefully that helps um, clarify the world of fake blood a little bit more for you.